Hello and welcome to Fallen Willow Forge. My name is John Walker. I'm the owner and blacksmith of Fallen Willow Forge. We are located in East Gwillimbury, Ontario, um, just north of Newmarket. And uh, at this forge, uh, we uh, offer a number of options for our customers. One is uh, public workshops, so people who are interested in, in, in learning something about forging and actually doing some forging to make perhaps a, a knife uh, or an axe or some other project of their choice, um, they can come here and do that. Uh, we also uh, offer custom forging work. So for anybody who has uh, a need for a specific type of item, a forged item, uh, they can send me some drawings and plans and we'll certainly do that for them. And the last element of the business is uh, uh, demonstrations at uh, events and uh, fairs, that type of thing where I act as a paid blacksmithing demonstrator and, and bring a mobile forging unit uh, to those, those events uh, and show people what forging looks like. Uh, today we're going to be doing a demonstration uh, forging basically a small leaf finial um, because of the nature of the length of the video I can't get into a big project but certainly something that's really quick you'll be able to see how how, a, how a metal is drawn out of a, uh, a piece of uh, a shape a rectangular shape or a piece of round bar and forged into a specific design in this case it's going to be a small leaf I'll probably turn it into a little keychain or something just uh, to finish it off the other thing we'll be doing today is uh, using the uh, coal, uh, coal forge here uh, because um, uh, although I do run propane forges and charcoal forges, the propane forges are extremely loud uh, because they're a venturi forge or an atmospheric forge and they uh, would definitely drown out the video on this, the audio story on this video. So uh, we will be using coal forges today. The coal forge today, you'll, uh, I'll, I'll explain a little bit about coal forges and how they work. And, the coking over of coal uh, and, uh, so that in order to uh, actually do your forging. The other thing we'll be using today is this uh, 327 pound Peter Wright anvil. This is a, a vintage anvil, it's probably circa 1890. So it's been around a long time, but it's, uh, it's the biggest anvil I own. I, I do have about nine anvils here and I can accommodate up to four people in a workshop, each having their own anvil, sharing uh, a uh, propane forge. Um, so those would be the kinds of things we'll be using today. I might go off, off uh, camera for a bit to do some file work on the, on the, the leaf finial or to use a, a post vise to do some of the work that may require that. However, you will see most of this process as we go along. Um, so stick with me and we'll get started in just a second. I'll be getting this coal forge up and running. Well, welcome back. Uh, I now have the coal forge operating. I will be using a piece of 3 8 inch round bar today to draw the uh, leaf finial from. Um, the coal forge is, uh, you, is a, an interesting thing. Many people ask questions like, do you forge in coal or in coke? And actual, the, actual, the answer to that is that you forge in both. Uh, you actually forge in coke, but you need coal in order to make coke. So in the forge, I've divided the forge into basically three uh, materials. I've got green coal or raw coal over here. Um, I have the coal that's coking over, which means basically burning off the volatiles in the coal to make it into coke. It's happening here in the fire where I'll be doing my work, obviously. And then over here, I've got all my coke from the last time I used this forge pulled over, and I'll be using that to feed this fire uh, to maintain the uh, to make them forging temperatures. The first thing I will do is put a taper on the end of the bar. So it's gonna be a little point, a little uh, rectangular shaped prism or point on the tip of the bar. That'll be the top of the leaf. The second thing I'll do is I'll then, somewhere down below that, that taper, I will put in a fuller on the edge of my anvil. And it's gonna, that fuller is gonna be a dent that's going to isolate the material that's gonna be used in actually forging the leaf. All right, so we'll get this in the fire. Get that nice and hot, and we'll start with the taper. What the coal coke is actually doing right now in the in the forge is acting like a refractory. It's less like a fuel, and it's acting more like what you would see in a in a potter's uh, kiln, which is to keep the heat isolated in this ball, this area right here. Uh, so that I can utilize that to make the metal more malleable and have it yield uh, much easier under, under the hammer blow. You 
you do have to constantly manage your fire. So constantly pull green coal onto the fire to coke it over. And you want to keep supplying coke into your forge, uh, into the fire, to keep the heat up. I'll be using a two pound cross peen hammer, which is a very typical blacksmithing hammer. And you can see that doesn't take very long to heat up at all. So now I'm going to put my taper on at the edge of my anvil by rotating the piece back and forth under the hammer with the hammer held at an angle. And you can see, hopefully, that there's now a taper in here. The next thing I'll do is come down a certain distance down, and that's just by choice, raise the piece up on the anvil and strike it, and that's going to put a fuller mark or a dent in my material. That's the area that's going to be isolated for the leaf. Below that will be what I draw for the stem. So now I've lost my heat. I'm going to go back into the forge and get this hot again. Our metal is once again hot and I'll now develop this fuller area to make it a bit deeper and a bit more obvious. And you'll see that in doing this, I'm actually making a lump of material over the edge of my anvil that's now isolated. So this mass is now pulled away from the bar and I'll use that to form the leaf and I'll use what's below this to draw out the stem to make this leaf keychain. Now I'm going to continue drawing out some of that material behind the stem, or behind the leaf rather, into a taper. And you can see as I strike on the edge of the anvil, acting like a fuller, it's pulling that metal, making it thinner. And as it gets thinner, the mass has to go someplace, so it's now moving out and getting longer. We'll now come back and we'll start to dress up the bottom of this fuller so it makes a nice leaf shape. It's time to also manage the fire a bit. Get some coal back in there, coke rather. Pull some coal up on top that will get coked over. Now one of the features of a coal forge is that I can add water to it to, act, to make a small oven or a small dome in the coking over of the of the coal and this allows me to keep my fire very much like as if I was baking a loaf of bread in an oven I can form a little oven with my coke and my coal which will assist me in actually drawing out this metal so we have a good heat again and now this little bit of raggy area down here we're just going to lightly tighten tidy that up on the fuller a lot of work in foraging is done on the edge of the anvil, not always on the face as people might think. But to make this a little tidier, so our leaf comes out more symmetrical. Some symmetry is a very important thing when you're forging. Now you can see, hopefully this is a bit tidier down here. I have my isolated mass for the leaf and I have my taper that will be the point and I've started to draw out the stem. Back into our forge, get another heat. So the leaf is starting to widen. I'm using the peen of the hammer. But I've only been working one side of that leaf, so now I have to flip the material over and I need to start working the leaf over on the other side so that it's not asymmetric in shape. You know, most leaves are pretty symmetrical and I want, I don't want uh, this one to be asymmetrical because that doesn't look like a leaf. So by using the peen you can see how the hammer has now spread that into a leaf shape. We'll go back into the forge. Now I'll start to draw the stem out a bit more. So now we're going to go back to the edge of our anvil and start to draw out the stem.
positioning of the piece is important uh, at this point because the deeper I put it into the forge, the, the higher the heat will go up the material. So the area that I was working on, I wanted to, I want to specifically have just that area really hot, not my leaf. My leaf is very thin now and can easily be burned off. So I don't want to get that hot. You can see how the leaf is very cold, but the stem is nice and hot. So we'll get back in here. Start narrowing this down, drawing it back. Straighten it all out. It's getting all bent on me now from all momentum and inertia issues. Newton's third law. Back into the forge, you can see things are starting to progress nicely. Now our leaf is developing well, and I'm going to use a different amount of power on my hammer now because I really don't want to damage the leaf, but I do want to thin the area down around the base of the leaf to make it more leaf-like. In order to do that without accidentally smashing all that material, I have to be a lot more cautious with my hammer blows. But as I get away from that spot, I can start to be a little bit more aggressive and work up to the edge of my anvil to start to narrow this out to start making it look more and more like a leaf. Hopefully that's in focus. And we'll go back in and continue to draw out that stem. Now that my leaf is getting a, a nice long stem on it, I don't need to have all of this material to hang on to. So I've now set the anvil up with what's called a hardy cutoff or a hot cut. And it's just a sharp tool that allows me to, when the metal is hot, basically shear it off. Now it's never a good idea to just let this fly somewhere because you never know where it's going to land. So you cut all the way, almost all the way through it and then you bend it back and forth until your metal breaks around that shear point. Yeah, and that's the thing you don't want to have happen. So now you got to go over and find that. Got it. <laughs> All right. So now we have our leaf project is now parted from the bar and we have to do some work in here now to draw the stem out longer and taper it because we want a big thick leaf down here. Um, we'll do some straightening first so that goes back into the forge. Get it nice and hot again and back at it. So now in order to do the work on the back of the stem, the end of the stem rather than on the leaf, I'm pretty happy with where the leaf is. I have flipped the project around, putting the stem into the forge and getting it nice and hot. And now I can use my anvil on the horn to start drawing this out to a taper. In order to get a taper, I have to draw it on two sides. So this is actually forming like a square. Even though a leaf is round, we'll fix that in a second. Better bite on that with my tongs. We've also lost some of our heat, so in order not to split the material, we're going to go back into the forge, get it hot again, and we'll come out and do a bit more work to draw that taper. Once I've got the taper drawn to where I want it, I'll then round up the stem, because stems aren't rectangular, they're round. So I'll be taking the square that I've just forged, uh, the square shape for the stem, I'll upset or forge down the vertices of that square, and make it into an octagon or an eight-sided shape instead of a four-sided shape. But the first thing I have to do is I do have to get this a little bit longer because I'm not real happy with the way it looks just yet. So we're going to taper it with some more hits down towards the end. I'm going to get a little more aggressive down towards the thicker part here because I want that to get longer and thin out. So hopefully you can see that. 
I'll show it to you once I've got it where I want it. Now, if I see that it's getting too thin, I'll simply stop forging over that area, but I'll forge up to it. So you can see that got much longer now, and hopefully you can also see that it's starting to taper out. You can also see that it's a square cross section. So we got to take care of that. One more heat, which means back into the forge to get enough forging heat in to actually do some forging. We'll draw that stem out a tiny bit more, and then I'm going to round the stem. By, by first of all going from a square, knocking down the vertices and becoming an octagon. So the piece is very thin now in the stem area. It's not going to take a lot of heat or a long time in the forge to bring it up to forging temperature. Because it is so small, uh, I run the risk of burning this up in the forge, especially in a coal forge. So I have to be very cautious of how much heat it gets. Uh, I also have to be very cautious of how much power I put into the hammer because I could very easily overpower this material now as it is so thin. So what I've done is I've tipped the square up on its diagonal and I'm now running my hammer down one side of the diagonal, flip it over 90 degrees onto the other diagonal and do the same there. Now I only have to do two diagonals because the anvil is really taking care of the two that it's sitting on. So the, the surfaces that are sitting on the anvil are being forged by the anvil as the hammer strikes. And that's the idea of your anvil. It's actually doing work uh, to the piece as you forge the top with the hammer. The anvil's pushing back and doing forging work on the bottom of your piece. So your, your anvil uh, is just as much a forging tool as your, as your hammer is. So we've got a good heat on it. You can see it doesn't take long for that to heat up. Now I've got to run this tape, I've got to run the diagonal out right to the end of the piece now. So I don't wind up with one square section and one round section. As, as I'm doing this, I'm also making the piece longer. I'm also making it round, but it's also getting longer. And I can see where I have to hit with a hammer in order to tidy things up. A little bit of work right there on the tip to make it a point. I'm gonna, you can see I've changed my hammer stroke a bit of a pull. And hopefully you can see that the stem is now becoming round instead of that square we had. Now I've got to do another little bit of work up here. So we'll go back in. We'll flip it around actually. I guess it's going to be easier to get that part into the forest. That's really the only spot I need to get hot. The other part turned out quite nicely. So this is our, our uh, preformed leaf blank. You can see the leaf, uh, the leaf is formed out here uh, and the stem has been drawn out and has been rounded and tapered and the, fit, the, uh, the fullered area in the leaf has been cleaned up. So now uh, what I'd like to do, and usually when I make a leaf I will um, put a detail in which is the main vein in the leaf uh, and I'm going to do that uh, by using what's known as a swedge block. And I use a swedge block that has various shapes in it to preform my leaf to actually using a smaller hammer now and a, and a good high heat. I'm going to start the fold of my leaf in half, which is going to produce a bend, a thickening uh, in this area where the, where the leaf folds, right at the fold. I can then forge that thickened area down to make it a permanent seam. And then by opening my leaf back up, I'll be left with a vein. Um, a vein effect in that leaf that gives us a much more realistic look. So now that the forge is again up to uh, temperature, I'm going to turn it down because I certainly have to be careful uh, with the uh, the fact that my the leaf is so thin that that heat could vaporize this in absolutely no time at all and all I'd be left with was a stem. So I'm going to go back into the forge now not very deep, just deep enough to, to pick up the heat on the leaf, the part that I want to fold. I'm going to turn this heat way down, just let this idle. And when it comes out, I'm going to set the leaf over top of one of these, probably here to start to get the curve formed and then move it over and gradually get a bigger curve uh, in the, in the uh, bigger fold rather, in the leaf. And then I will seam it. So you can see that didn't take long at all. And that's what you have to be careful of. So now I'm centering up the leaf 
And using this small ball peen hammer, I'm just running the leaf, the, the hammer, right down the groove in the swedge block. I hope you can see this. And I'll show you what the end result looks like. So we've gone from our flat leaf, and now we're starting to put a curve into the leaf. And I'm going to do that a couple more heats to fold this right over, and then I'm going to seam it. And that'll make a permanent seam, which will become the vein in the leaf. Go back in the forge. So now that I have this uh, the leaf partially opened, I can get my chisel in here and then start to just gently open it up. Open the, uh, the edges of the leaf back up just by manipulating the chisel back and forth. You can kind of see how that's now starting to open. Hopefully you can see the, the change here, how this is starting to open up. Now I'll do that until it's wide open. Uh, and then I'll have uh, my leaf open back up and I'll have the main veins in uh, uh, forged into the leaf from the crease that was made during the fold. So back in the forging, fair bit of heat. I think we're going to have to do a little fire tending here and get some more coke back in the, uh, the forge to get the heat up. I'm going to keep the thin edges of the leaf facing up in the forge, keep the heavier part of the, of the leaf uh, structure, which is the vein area, down so that I run, don't run the risk of actually burning it up. There we go. She's starting to open now. Nice. There we are. And I just keep wiggling that back and forth. And you can see that's actually starting to for forge open now. Now what I will do, I'm not going to try to get this open with the chisel completely. What I'll be using is another, another tool, probably in the hardy, that will allow me to tap onto an edge and then spread both parts of the of the leaf open at the same time. So we'll get that in there. I'm going to switch over put this a tool like this in the hardy in the hardy hole which is going to allow me to use this edge. This is probably a better edge. This edge to actually help tap this open. Now in order not to, to destroy this I am going to go back and use my lighter hammer again. So once I've got the, the leaf slightly open I can now use the angle on this tool. Hopefully you can see that I have the leaf. And by manipulating, you know, angling the leaf differently, I can then start to get the leaf open back up. So now we have our, our leaf is, uh, is finished off. The main vein is in there that widened the uh, size of the leaf out a bit. Next thing I want to do is because this is going to be a keychain, I want to put a right angle bend in the stem to start my loop for the, the, the keychain portion of this project. Uh, whatever stem I have left over, I'll then, I'll then twist around the stem to finish it off. So we're getting pretty close to completion now. So I'm going to flip our piece around and now I'm going to put it in with the stem into the forge. And I want the heat to be very, fairly high up the stem. Uh, close to the leaf if possible. I do want to turn this forge down a bit because it is uh, it is raging pretty good right now. I'll be using the uh, edge of the anvil. There we go. And you can see we have a good heat. That didn't take long at all. So now I'm going to be coming off to the edge of the anvil and I'm going to be tapping the stem down. Give me a bit of a right angle bend here. You can kind of see where I'm going with this, all right? Now, um, if I wasn't doing a discussion and allowing this piece to cool off, I would actually continue to forge. What I'm gonna do right now in order to keep that bend is I'm gonna quench just a portion of that off and then with the remaining hot material, I'm gonna to start to bring my loop around on the horn. So now you can kind of see what's going on. I've got my, my loop started here and I'm now starting to bring this material around. I'm going to use the tip of the, four, of the horn to get a pretty tight loop, but what's left over will be wrapped around the stem. All right, so I've got to go back and get this hot now, leave this cold so that I don't actually straighten this out as I'm trying to forge a loop. So back in the forge. The best thing about a small little project like this is you actually get a, a, great, a great practice on a lot of blacksmithing techniques. The second good thing about it is that because it is so fine, 
it doesn't require a lot of heat to get it to be where you want it to be. And you can see as I'm coming around the horn now, using the very tip of the horn, I can start to form the, uh, the loop that I need for my keychain. All right. So you can see there, just that little simple movement. I now have a loop formed. I'll, I'll go up with a pair of scrolling tongs, which I'll show you in a second. These are what I call scrolling tongs. I'll use these to actually twist my remaining stem uh, around. So we get a good heat on it again. Now I will, what I will do is I will quench off the loop because I don't want the loop to forge while I'm twisting my stem. A little bit of fire management. We're losing some of our heat. We're back in. We're going to be using the, uh, the horn of the anvil just to round out the, uh, the eye of the keychain a little bit more symmetrically and then uh, give it a couple of twists. Maybe put some organic bending into the leaf itself. So all I do to round this out is basically come on my horn and just lightly chase the uh, loop of the keychain around the tip of the horn. Straighten that out a bit. And you can see that gives a nice, nice shape to the, the loop of the keychain. You can also see the stem is now swirled or curled around to secure everything in place. And now I just need to do a little bit of work on the leaf itself to, to make it look a little less rigid, a little more organic. So that'll be uh, just a little finishing work, which is like tapping the tip over, uh, maybe curling an edge of the leaf, that type of thing. So it looks a little bit more like nature made it uh, and not me. I will switch over to a lighter hammer for that because this work is pretty delicate. And it doesn't need a lot of heat and doesn't need a lot of force. I'll grab well onto the there we go and we'll just come around here and we'll bring the tip over maybe forge out a little bit of the leaf this way and a little bit of it this way just to give it a bit of a flow that looks nice maybe a slight bend this way just got some a little bit of curve in the stem and we'll give it a quick brush it over same on this side and there we have our finished leaf keychain now it's 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 almost finished what we do like what I do like to do with this is I'll set it close to the fire now not in the forge but close to it and uh, I will get my supply of beeswax Give it one more brushing to take some of the uh, scale off and give it a nice beeswax finish. The beeswax finish will do a couple of things. It will give it a bit of a wrought iron look to the piece. Uh, this, is, this isn't wrought iron, this is just steel, so it's, you know, it's, um, it'll darken it, make it blacker. And the other thing it's going to do is it's going to help protect it from uh, rust. So we just give it once over this way. With a nice amount of heat on there still, I will grab a rag or a brush. Maybe we'll use a brush for this. Pick up a little bit of the beeswax on the brush and then just start to lightly brush it on. Now you have to be a little bit careful when you're doing this because sometimes the beeswax does want to flare up. Yeah, you don't want to have this you know too close to anything that burns uh, including yourself so we'll put that there move our tongue over so we can get that spot and i hope that you can see as the beeswax burns off it actually polymerizes and darkens the steel so now we have a nice protective coating of, of uh, beeswax on our finished part and you can see our our little leaf finial keychain. Well, this concludes our uh, the blasphemy demonstration, um, and I'd like to thank thank folks for hanging in there and, and uh, watching this to the end. Hopefully, 
Uh, if you are interested in, um, in pursuing a workshop, you can certainly contact me at, uh, uh, through Facebook. The uh, hashtag is at Fallen Willow Forge, all one word. Um, or you can send me emails to jpwalker1957 at yahoo.com and uh, we can arrange uh, to, to some kind of a workshop for you. You can certainly go to the Facebook page uh, and take a look at all the workshops that have been done at Fallen Willow Forge uh, and see the results of what, what people have been forging here. So again, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure doing this demonstration and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.